Let's talk about the five different ways that we can prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. The first way is to show that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. I drew a little picture to show that when they indicate that lines are parallel, they use a little arrow, and if there's already a pair of parallel, parallel sides within one figure, then they'll label the other pair with two arrows and so on, just to indicate that those specific lines are parallel. So that's the first way. Number two is both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So again, they use different amounts of tick marks to help you understand which pairs are congruent. Number three is one pair of opposite sides are both congruent and parallel. So they indicate that with the tick mark and the arrow. So one side is both. Diagonals bisect each other. So when they bisect each other, that means that the two halves of that diagonal, once bisected by the other diagonal, would be congruent or equal. So those are equal, and then those two would be equal. And then both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Let me see. That word just got smudged a little bit. So both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So if they indicate that those angles are congruent, or if you can prove that they're congruent, then you can conclude that the quadrilateral is more specifically a parallelogram. Let's look at some examples. So just given a figure that's labeled with some information, can you tell that it's a parallelogram? Just a simple yes or no. So number one does indicate that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So that is one of the ways that we tell that it's a parallelogram. So let's just put a little yes. That one is a parallelogram. Number two, your diagonal is bisected for one of them, but we don't know anything about the other diagonal. You never want to assume information about a picture. So it might look like it would be bisected, but don't go by looks alone. Go by the information that they label or that they state within the problem. So we have to say that one will be a no. We don't have enough information. For number three, both pairs of opposite angles are indicated to be congruent. And that is one of our five ways. So that's a definite yes. For number four, you have one pair of opposite sides congruent and another pair is parallel. The rule for proving it would be that one pair is both congruent and parallel. So this is a no, because one pair congruent and another pair parallel is not enough information. For number five, they've labeled these angles as congruent. This one and that one that are alternate of each other, and then this one and that one that are alternate of each other, which is good information, but we don't know anything about these angles here. So it's still not enough information to prove that that would be a parallelogram. On number six, these marks indicate that that one side is both congruent and parallel to the other, so that would be a yes. For number seven, you can tell that both sides are, both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, which is a definite yes. For eight, they've labeled some angles, but it really doesn't help us determine that this entire parallelogram it well let's check something real quick if you remember from previous classes these are vertical angles in the middle so then if they're vertical angles and all three angles of those triangles are congruent then they would be the same and if they are the same then we know that corresponding parts of them would be the same so that means that that side and that side would be equal and that side and that side would be equal to each other. But then you notice how the diagonals are still not bisected because we don't know that these two would equal each other. And that's important. So we'd still have to call this one a no. And for number nine, we know that this diagonal is bisected and that angle is equal. But again, it's just not enough information. So let's look at three more examples of what if you're given a figure and you're told it is a parallelogram, then you use the properties of a parallelogram to help solve the problem. So number one, we can tell that this is sitting on a diagonal and in a parallelogram, it would be bisected. And so we can set these two expressions equal to each other and solve. So let's put three X equals four X minus five. Then I'm going to 
subtract 4x. So I get negative x equals negative 5. And if I get rid of the negative 1, x would just equal 5. So some simple arithmetic after you set it up. For number 2, if we're told A, B, C, D is a parallelogram, then we would know that these sides are parallel, so they would also have to be congruent. So we could set 3x plus 1 is equal to 6x minus 4. We could subtract 3x on both sides. So 1 equals 3x minus 4. We can add 4. So 5 would equal 3x and then divide by 3. So 5 thirds equals x. It doesn't necessarily have to be an integer. It could be a fraction. So that's our answer for number 2. And number three, they gave us these numbers are in some angles. And a lot of times they'll put a little degree symbol just to make sure you know that that's an angle. It's not the length of a segment. And so I had just left mine out. But they'll normally put that little dot that looks like a bubble, like a fish blowing a bubble. So you know that, that 3x would equal 2y. But if we set that equal, it really isn't going to help us solve for x or y. So the other thing that we know is consecutive angles, these two beside each other, would be equal to 180 when we add them together. They're supplementary. So we could do it that way. We can go this way. You can do different things here. I'm going to say 3x plus 60 equals 180. If I subtract 60, I get 3x equals 120. And if I divide by 3, I can solve and say x equals 40. And then I just need to get y. So y, I can say, also will go with that 60 beside it. So 2y plus 60 equals 180. Then I could subtract 60, so I get 120. I can divide by 2, so y equals 60 and x equals 40. If you plug it back into the figure, it should make sense that those angles opposite of each other would be equal. So 40 times x right here would be 120. And that adds up to 180. And if I plug in 60 for y, that also adds up to 120. So you can kind of check your math and make sure those.